Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. This video will introduce you to the basic organizational structure of Access Commander and show how access rules work to control access. The first step in configuring access control is to define a company. This is the basic entity that allows users to be split into different sites or buildings. Each company will contain at least one entity known as a group. Users then need to be assigned to their relevant group. Similarly, a company can contain devices, and each device needs to be assigned to an entity known as a zone. In order to grant users access to specific areas, groups and zones need to be connected via an entity known as an access rule, which may optionally be restricted by setting a time profile. Although the title of companies is used, its main function is to separate users from different companies, buildings, sites, etc. In this case, users from a particular company or site cannot access the details of users from a different company or site. Users are created within the users menu. Once a user is added, their details can be completed. Every user needs to be assigned to at least one group, otherwise access cannot be granted to that user. A user may belong to several groups. User details can include their email address, credentials, attendance monitoring, group assignments, etc. Authorization settings provide the option of defining a user's access settings to Access Commander and authentication levels within the software where required. The accesses define specific access information, such as a user card number, Bluetooth ID, fingerprint, or a PIN code. The phone numbers section is where a user's phone numbers can be added. Each user can have up to three phone numbers and the order in which they are called can also be managed here. After devices have been added, they must be assigned to a zone. A device may only be assigned to a single zone, but each zone may contain several devices and can be a member of multiple companies. Zones are basically areas we want to allow access for certain groups of users. Although a zone can be a whole building, there's often a need to divide access into specific areas for specific group of users. We can set shared zones such as a parking lot or main entrance, but also zones can be a group of floors or just a specific floor. A zone can also be defined for just a single room guarded by a 2N IP device. Now we'll move on to the devices section. Before a device is synchronized to Access Commander, you may import settings like users and their details, time profiles and display settings directly from the device. However, once a device has been synchronized to Access Commander, it's important to ensure that any settings which Access Commander manages must be changed exclusively within Access Commander rather than in the device itself. Besides information about the device, like network or firmware, etc., we can set in Access Commander which users will be called by quick dial buttons when pressed, or display settings. We can also back up or restore device configuration here. Time profiles allow for users' access to be restricted to specific times, or to restrict the times that a user's phone number can be called from the intercom. This feature is optional and may be left unconfigured if no time restrictions are required, allowing access 24-7. Finally, groups of users and specific zones of devices can be tied together with access rules. An access rule will grant all of the users from its group to any device in its zone. When changes are made to users from such a group, those changes are automatically synchronized to all the devices in the access rules zone. That completes this tutorial. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a pleasant experience with 2N products.